So Holly, what have you thought to the show? It's been a good one, right? It's been really good. So it's been quite a lot busier than last year, I think. Yeah, uh, not as hot, which is really good because last year it was literally baking. Um, and yeah, no, it's been really, really good. Everything's um, gone to plan. We've been busy on the stand. Haven't had a lot of time to actually look around, but yeah got a really good feel of, of everyone. Everyone seems to be in a good mood. I think they do, um, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, that, is, and, that is right. Yeah, and everyone's really pleased to be here and seeing the bikes. And I think a lot of people are rode here and it's been a really nice day for them to ride. So that's probably helped. Um, and yeah, so the alcohol has been flowing as well on the non-riders. Hasn't it? Well, do you know, obviously, Holly, you did the, um, the NEC with us last year as well, right? I mean, it's just my impression, but I think there's a bit of feel-good vibe here. Would you agree? Yeah, I think this is definitely more of a social show. Yeah. Um, in comparison to the other shows, you're kind of going there solely, you've got like a goal in mind. Um, but here people are kind of napping on the couches, people are chilling out, you know, people have been here all day, they were here yesterday, they're going to be here tomorrow, you come here, get your tattoo, you know, so it's, yeah, it's more of a social and I think that's what's really good about it and um, yeah, they've made really, really good use of the space. Um, it's really nice and light and open plan, you can see everything in great detail um, and yeah, we've, we've, we've had a really, really busy day as well and it's, it's, it's great for me because I learn a lot about the, the products and the prices and more of the kind of technical side of things how they work and yeah so um, no I've really enjoyed it it's flown by uh, so Jeff um, <laughs> how's the show gone I, I think it's been absolutely brilliant it's, it's ridiculously busy which is fantastic and have you seen a particular bike you like oh that FTR 1200 mate I, that is just my dream bike I also like the Fantic Caballero but yeah. but that's obviously a, a whole different ball game because it's a, 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 a 40 brake horsepower single cylinder. The FTR is like just a massive tool, isn't it? So I, that's what I would really love. All right, so we are here with two of the Bike Shed Show's probably hardest critics, Joshua and Jacob. Boys, what, what have you thought of the show so far? It's good. It's good? Yeah. Is it? What, yeah. what, what's been the best bit? Uh, eating. Eating? Yeah. So the food's been good? Yeah. The motorbike's been good? Yeah. Just good fun? Yeah. And what have you thought, Jake? Um, we had good fun. Anything else? Um, the motorbikes are good? Yeah. Have you been able to sit on any, though? Yeah. You have? Oh, don't tell them, eh? So, thumbs up, boys. Thumbs up. Morning, all. It's Mark here from, uh, from Knox Armour. We're here at Bike Shed uh, Tobacco Dock for the show. It's the last day. It's Sunday morning. Um, we're about 15 minutes before they open the doors to the general public, those lucky folks who are going to come in here and check out some absolutely stunning bikes. But what we thought we would do is, um, is just give you a little taster of some of the really lovely pieces of kit that are here on display this weekend. So the first bike that we wanted to show you was this absolutely beautiful Royal Enfield that has been brought here by Royal Enfield. I think essentially what they wanted to do is showcase um, the 650 chassis, the 650 frame motor, and put together something. I mean, I've got to say, it's a beautiful looking machine. I absolutely love the fairing. It's a bit of a kind of an homage to an early race bike, isn't it? Um, twin cylinder and the exhaust system on this bike is is something to behold i've got to say you've got four pipes exiting on this i'm in the way here aren't i so both ends of the cylinder head you've got you've got uh, an exit pipe coming down the side and then what they've done is they've obviously cleaned up the bike and all the wiring and battery and gubbins and in, inside of the covers they've got two exhausts exiting off the back part of the cylinder head on both sides of the bike so it does look absolutely stunning um, piggyback Olin shocks on the back, adjustable Olin shocks on the front. They've upgraded the brakes, so you've got hu a huge single Brembo disc on the front, which is quite unusual. But it does look absolutely beautiful. More modernised headlight. Um, the bars are stunning. It's all billeted aluminium. It's just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful exercise in creating something very, very bespoke and special. It's called the Nort TGT. I'm not sure whether you actually pronounce it like that, but it could be naughty, I suppose. Um, and of course, there are a couple of other Royal Enfields that have been uh, um, <coughs> have been built here too. Rough Craps have turned up with, did I say Rough Craps then? I meant Rough Crafts. I've turned up with this Midas Royale, which is, again, just so trick, so pretty. Um, looks like there's a lot of carbon fibre on here. SC Project Exhaust. Again, Olin's adjustable suspension. Um, Behringer uh, caliper and disc setup on it. I mean, it is just beautiful. 
it's amazing actually when you start to look at these bikes how much imagination how much craftsmanship and how much sort of how many different uh, options you have to create something very very unique very something very unusual and very beautiful i mean a lot of these bikes for me are they're almost like ornaments you know i'm I'm not sure that I would necessarily want to ride any of these bikes. I'd like to stare at them for most of the day. It'd be going in my lounge, not my garage, I can tell you that much. The Naughty Royal Enfield bike, I've got to say, is a bike that I would absolutely love to uh, swing my leg over and have a go on. It's, it's very, very pretty indeed. Darren and I have had a really good walk round, and I think we're, we kind of find it pretty amusing that actually some of the bikes that we tend to really favour are based on modern machinery. Um, Although there's a bit of a similar theme appearing here because we've obviously just looked at the Royal Enfields. We're on, we're on um, Yamaha's sort of yard built stand and there's a couple of bikes. In fact, I saw this particular bike, the XSR 700 on Bike Exif for the first time. I've got to say it is an incredibly, incredibly interesting looking motorcycle. Um, so essentially based on the MT-07 XSR 700 platform. Um, Essentially, they just pair it back, strip it, and you, you come up with something incredibly interesting to look at. Um, the fairing on this bike is... I, I'm, I'm get, well, the, yeah, yeah, there kind of isn't one, you're right, Aaron. I mean, it, uh, it, it, it's just such a, such a cool-looking, sort of modern, futuristic... It reminds me sort of a Transformer in some ways, but, yeah, it's so pared back. They've effectively stripped all the tank away, and they come up with this... I mean, I, I guess it's just, you know, it's kind of plastic pieces that they bolt on. I'm pretty sure as well, like this... I absolutely love this this rear light on here. Pretty sure I've seen this, that you can you can actually... You can buy this as a kit, and it will just pop onto any, the back of any bike if you can make it fit. Um, complete new seat, new tank. Um, SC Projects exhaust. I mean, it, it's just a really, really cool-looking piece of kit. Um... I'm really, really smitten with it. And of course, you know, the advantage of having one of these modern bikes is, you know, it is a bike you think, actually, I could take that out of the garage and ride it all day. And it's, it's not likely to overheat and explode. <laughs> um, it's a similar theme with the, with, the, with the bike next to it as well. We've got an XSR 900 here too, which um, is effectively the XSR 700's bigger brother. And they've done a really, really cool job of this. In fact, it reminds me in a lot of ways of... Um, of Kawasaki's 900 RS. Now this has actually got um, a bolt-on kit that's created by Velocity Moto. We're reliably informed that it, its retail value is about 1,500 quid. And what you get for that is a very, very cool looking, unique sort of homage bike to the 350. Is it 350 LC? See, yeah. Um, and essentially you, you get something that looks very, very cool, very special, but the, 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 the bits and pieces that you buy will just bolt onto the bike. So you've got uh, a new instrument binnacle, new pieces of fairing. Um, this bike has obviously got some uh, additional rear sets, different exhaust, which I'm guessing is in addition to the 1500 quid. But you know you, what you end up with um, is something very, very cool. Again, uh, we're also told that you can have different different colorways on the bike, so you can you can pick and choose the kind of colors that you want to go with. But it's it's just a very, very cool looking machine, and based on a modern machine. But you get something that looks very classic. It's got a really classic silhouette. Um, Really impressed with it. Okay, look, there is absolutely no shortage of really good looking bikes at this uh, show. But honestly, I think this, in terms of being a bike that I would actually love to look at and ride, this has got to be, I think, my best choice, which is the R90 uh, Racer Custom. I just think it's beautiful. I mean, look at the paint job on it. Black and gold, I'm an absolute sucker for that. And I know, obviously, this bike is gonna ride absolutely phenomenally. I've rode uh, them quite a lot. 110 horsepower, handles phenomenally. Um, yeah, I mean, what a what a custom job. I mean, actually, obviously, the the normally single sided swing arm like that's shaft driven, but I don't know, just something about it. Uh, perhaps it's the wheel choice or something. Uh, the rear just really accentuates that, makes the bike look really long, really low, um, and flipping cool in my opinion. Absolutely love this one. Obviously, a uh, big part of the bike shed and one of the main sponsors, Indian, right? Yes, absolutely. Hi, how you doing? Very good, thank you. Sorry, a bit of an awkward start. It's been a long day, actually. <laughs> right, really excited about some of your new machines, right? The FTR 1200. It's going to be a big, rip-roaring success, right? Yeah, sure. It's absolutely new for us to, to come here with a, with a street bike. You guys have already had a play on the AMA Flat Track Racer, I think. Yes, we did. Actually, as part of our Urban Pro and Android Mark IV uh, campaign, we got 
we were so lucky actually to get this. So Steve brought it up to Cumbria. We had a play out on it. Phenomenal machine, right? Yeah, it's it's the I believe it's the only bike in Europe as well. So these only are only in use in the AMA series at the moment. So it's 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 a rare opportunity to get to go on one. Well, funnily enough, actually, we, we, we said to Steve uh, as part of the shoot, actually, Steve, can we sort of like do a really slow crash? And he was like, no. Did he make you clean it as well afterwards? Uh, he, he actually saw, Mark did it, actually, who's behind the camera. So, yeah, he cleaned it for him. <laughs> right, okay, so super excited about the FTR 1200. But for this show, you guys have done a bit of a mashup, right? Yeah, so we, we've been very, very, very lucky. So, you know, the Street FTR 1200 is, is a project born from the racer that we see here. Yeah. And now we have gone further with a race development of the street bike to race in hooligans in DTRA, I believe in the USA as well. So we're really, really excited. It's this bike you see right behind you. So, so is that actually going to be able, uh, you know, so is a customer going to be able to actually purchase this or is this just a one-off? So we've got two bikes that SNS prepared for us. So it's at very early stages. So they've developed a kit specifically to get the geometry of the bike just right for racing. Um, there's a lot of work going into it, so they're the only two bikes, uh, uh, again, this side of the pond. Um, so early in development, but we hope at some point it'll be, the kit will be available for customers so they can buy an FTR, uh, modify it in the same way and be really competitive. Well, it's fantastic. And do you know what? I cannot wait to have a go on one of these. So please, Andy, let us have a, let's have a go at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, you're more than welcome. I think we get, we're going to get some of these in in a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, you'll be in the queue behind me uh, um, and, and everyone else that I work with because none of us have actually ridden the street bikes yet. Dutch, uh, thanks for taking the time out. And firstly, I just want to congratulate you. I think it's been an absolutely fantastic show. Really, really enjoyed it. On a personal level and for a business, it's been good too. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're really chuffed. It's a great crowd and a good vibe and... Yeah, and all the exhibitors have done themselves proud. I have to say, I think, you know, we do all the shows and this is probably the most, you know, feel good factor one that we do. I had my kids here yesterday, they had a great time. Um, you know, it's, it's just, just fantastic and it is it's really great to see um, such, a, such a family vibe here as well, right? Well, the whole point for, for this show is it's, it's, it is a motorcycle show. But we always say it's for people who love motorcycles, but also for the people who love people who love motorcycles. Yeah. It's definitely about bikes and for everyone. And we wanted to create an event where you can bring the kids and you can bring your mum. Yeah. And, you know, some of the brands who've never been here before, some of the big brands are like, we've never been to a bike show where people are pushing kids on push chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, or kids are running around, sort of yeah. unsupervised. Yeah. Because well, I, nearly lo I nearly lost mine yesterday. Yeah, so we want that because we're trying to recruit new people into biking. I mean, you know, for decades, biking has been quite shoved quite far up its own ass, yeah. but with people being too cool. And, uh, and ultimately, if you spend your time being too cool, you don't invite anybody in and you don't let anybody else enjoy what you think is cool for you. So it, this show is really about celebrating the creativity around bike culture and bike people mm. to attract me, more people to it, especially in an era where we live in a, a world of health and safety and don't do anything fun or dangerous or interesting. Mm despite levels of protection from people like Knox, nobody wants us to have a good time. And if we hurt ourselves, it's our fault. So we need to show that biking is a vibrant, creative community of nice people, and that's what this event's all about. Right, and I might be putting you on the spot here, but have you got a favorite bike? Do you know what? Um, there's a lot of bikes I really love here, and, and it's always tough to um, name, name them out, but there's a, there's a builder called um, Alons, uh, I don't know if I've said his name right, but he's built this amazing Bevel Ducati down in Quayside One opposite the Triumph Bobber Stand, which is incredible, although I rather like that one as well. Um, and Hookie and Co have bought um, one of the nicest R90s I've seen, uh, which is really, really good. Um, there's, there's loads of great bikes here. And, uh, and on, in fact, the Bobber Build-Off, which I wasn't particularly excited about a Bobber Build-Off because everyone does a Build-Off, but there's this crazy looking kind of 70s bike that looks like it was built for a porn shoot. Um, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, which is kind of like this orange and it's a fantastic looking thing. I mean, when you go there, you'll, you'll go, oh yeah, that's what he's talking about. So I've seen a few favorites, but all for different reasons. Well, thanks again and uh, congratulations, man. Do you, do you want to? Oh, thank you very much. I told myself that money would never be a factor. 
Now I'm laughing at Benny Hanna's with benefactors. My sell my soul for an artist's love with them giant raptors. My chef cooking that steak and lobster on giant platters. Forsaking all I can for this path of master. Path to disaster and saved by the master. I'm hearing they laughter, uh. Took off my own grapes. Yes, this I'm is Ryan, Ryan Roadkill. Um, yeah, we follow you guys on Instagram and it's been uh, great to meet you finally. Uh, Mom and Dad, uh, Love your stuff. We've got it in the house. Blah blah blah. I really like your stuff. So you know, great work, man. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Has it been a good show for you? Yeah, it's been a great show. Yeah, really busy. Probably busier than last year. Yeah, great turnout. Really nice people. Great crowd. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So um, obviously you're, ba you're you're another northerner like us, right? Based up in uh, Newcastle, right? Yeah, that's right, Newcastle. But Ryan uh, also wears our some of our products. You guys, uh, you and Tom went to uh, USA last year, right? Riding in some of our uh, Knox gear. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, we went to California. Yeah, it was awesome. Great trip. Yeah. It looked like a trip of a lifetime, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Hopefully, be able to repeat that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the weather was great. It was um, really warm. We did get caught out in a torrential storm one day, um, but yeah, the Nox gear was great. Kept us safe, kept us warm. Uh, so look, if we're interested in your artwork, where, 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 can, we, where can we buy it from? Uh, you can get it from my website, which is ryanroadkill.com. Yeah, I've got a shop on there with all my gear on, yeah. Fantastic. Great, well, be sure to check it out. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. So look, killing two birds with one stone. This is Tom Bing. I've just met him literally five minutes ago. But hey, what a photographer, man. I absolutely love your work. Uh, cheers, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah, appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. I really wanted to ask you because I saw the whole exhibition on the Helmets for India, and I know you were really involved in that. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, it, So it was um, an initiative by a German guy called Niels Peter Jensen, um, and he just got a team of people together with some support from Royal Enfield and a couple of helmet companies, like Head On and a couple of other people. And uh, yeah, my involvement was just as a, as a photographer to go out on the trip. We did two weeks in India. Uh, we we helped help with the first sort of moto art show, which is the second one, but it's the first organization that have done it. Uh, in Mumbai, so we did a helmet art show, showed all the, um, the helmets there, uh, helmets from like Ryan, Maxwell, Pat and Oster, d -Face, loads of people, Indian artists too. And then after that, we rode to Goa on Royal Enfield, giving away helmets along the way, and we kind of did some organized helmet giveaways and stuff, so. Yeah. Well, uh, well, hang on, so, so how, many, how many helmets can you carry on a motorbike? Well, we had a support van, oh, yeah, we had a support van with it. I was thinking, guy, you're going to be quite stingy with that. No, um, no we, had a, yeah, we had them piled on the roof, piled in the back. Yeah, it was really cool, actually. Uh, it was into the hundreds. Yeah, I don't know exactly how many. We had a load of these kids' ones as well, so we gave away loads of kids' helmets. So, yeah, it was into the hundreds, and we've given since given more away, and we've been doing like stuff to just raise the profile of the, the charity and stuff. So there'll be like loads more to come. They're planning another trip, I think, later in the year. I think there'll be some really exciting stuff to come. It's not just a one-hit thing. It's going to like evolve and carry on going, hopefully. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, thanks for sort of telling us a little bit about that. Yeah, and. No um, sounds really, uh, sound really a great thing to do. Um, yeah. So you know, this has been uh, Tom Bing. You can check him out on yeah. Tom. Wait, well, just search at Tom at Bing, Tom right? Bing, at Tom Bing photo on Instagram or yeah, Tom-Bing.com uh, on the internet. Yeah. Fantastic, man. Don't be a stranger. Cheers. Great to meet you. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, cheers, so just wrapping up the Bike Shed Show 2019. What a show it's been. It's been absolutely fantastic. Man, I mean, we work some shows here at Knox, you know, um, all sorts of different shows. Probably the most fun one I've been uh, at. You know, what a great bunch of exhibitors, what a great bunch of customers. I think we've met some really interesting people. Hopefully you've seen one or two of them um, as part of this little video that we've put together. Uh, the product range has gone down phenomenally. Our 2019 range really fits what, you know, uh, this kind of customer wants, you know, in terms of, putting you know other clothes over the urban pro and stuff like that uh, feedback has just been amazing and y you know what a greatly put on show fantastic venue great food great drink uh, you know just a, just a great thing and you know what we're really proud to be a part of it too so hope you've enjoyed this little video um, please like please subscribe please comment on the video and we will see you next time my career in the stage, you just a side show. Carrying the shame everywhere that I go. Ain't no way this can continue, I know.
But do I want that mercy or that mercy lie go? Oh, I'm flawed But how long can I live life like this?